and another one. The Oklahoma Sooners got another commit to the 2023 recruiting class. We'll talk about that as well as no Sooners on the athletics freak list. Are you kidding me with that? Got to be kidding me with that on today's episode of Locked On Sooners. You are Locked On Sooners, your daily podcast on the Oklahoma Sooners. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. What's up, Sooner Nation? Welcome to a weekend edition of Locked On Sooners. Thank you for joining us. My name is John Williams. You can follow me on Twitter at John9Williams. And joining me is Josh Helmer. You can follow him on Twitter at JoshOnRef. You can also hear him Monday through Friday on 94.7 The Ref in Norman from 9 to noon. Josh, what's up, man? What's going on? Feeling good. Oklahoma, another commit. We thought that Jacoby Johnson, that would be happening shortly for the Sooners, but when you can add the number 10 athlete to your class, the number three player from Oklahoma, and actually a little bit higher than that, if you're looking at the 24 seven sports composite ranking, where Jacoby Johnson's the number six athlete and the number two player from Oklahoma, number six athlete, uh, obviously nationally and number two player from Oklahoma. That's good. That's great. And I've seen Jacoby Johnson play a lot in person over the course of his high school career, John, he has been in class six, a one, especially on the west side of the state, a one-man wrecking crew at times. I mean, last year, you know, versus the Norman Tigers, there were – I don't even remember the exact amount of points put up between the two teams, but a large portion of that was because of the explosiveness and the ability to just kind of toss it up to somebody like a Jacoby Johnson on the outside. Obviously, though, Jacoby Johnson, he's much more than just a talented wide receiver. In fact – We'll see if that's even really where he's going to wind up in at Oklahoma. Yeah, it sounds like, and you know, I, I talked to their guy Parker Thune of 247 Sports, our our recruiting analyst, um, you know, over there that we like to bring on the show often. And he said, it looks like he's projecting to play cornerback for Oklahoma. So you're getting a guy who's six foot three, 185 pounds, you know, going into his senior year, uh, that you're going to be able to put on the outside to match up with the likes, you know, down the road with players of the ilk of like Quentin Johnston, a dude who's, you know, six, four, six, five, and, you know, well over 200 pounds. Like you can match up with guys like that because you have a guy like him. And yeah, just watching some of the, the huddle, you know, film or huddle highlights that I got to see. I mean, this is a, a super athlete. I mean, you mentioned it just like his explosiveness just jumps off the screen at you. But the other thing that really jumps off to me is his awareness, just his ability to read and diagnose plays as they're happening. Uh, one play in particular I thought was great was he was in zone coverage playing cover three, you know, was carrying his man through his zone, running a post route while well, they tried to sneak a corner route in behind him. Well, he quickly passed his guy off, redirected himself to the guy that was going towards the corner of the end zone, had enough you know speed to make up the difference and make up the distance, came up with the interception on the play. So it, it was just showing that headiness and the ability to to work in the zone and then be able to pass guys off and, and pick up and, you know, the guy that he should be picking up. Uh, the other thing that really stood out to me is just his ability in run defense. He's not afraid to get up and tackle in the running game. And more often than not, he's making the play. And what I really, really liked about him is that he's very sound, not only as a tackler, but as a run defender. If his responsibility is to you know, maintain the outside edge, maintain that outside leverage, even if he's getting blocked, he's making sure that that running back's not going to get to the outside. And more often than not, though, he's able to dip up and under that blocker and get behind him to make the play, whether it's a wide receiver screen, uh, a sweep out to the running back. Uh, He just looks like a a really heady ball player. And and I think it's going to be a great fit with Brent Venables and Ted Roof in that defense. Uh, If he ends up playing cornerback, it looks like that's where he's projected to play now. But yeah, you mentioned it, man. If he plays as a wide receiver, That'd be a huge add, too, because he's got the athleticism to go up and get the football. He's a natural hands catcher, which I think will translate quite well to the defensive side of the football, too. Like when when the ball is in the air and he has an opportunity to make a play on it, he's not going to be dropping interceptions. That's just going to be a very natural aspect to his game. So and it's one of those guys that we've kind of been expecting to commit to Oklahoma for some time now. 
every single crystal ball or on three recruiting prediction or rivals future cast had him going to Oklahoma for several months now. It's just kind of now was the time for it to come to fruition. He makes the commitment now, the 20th commitment for the Oklahoma Sooners. And yeah, man, I, I'm pumped. I'm excited to have this guy on the field because it what's cool is now you have two different corners in your 2023 recruiting class between him and Josiah Wagner. Josiah Wagner, a little bit shorter guy, not necessarily somebody that you're hoping that you can, you know, match up against a 6'4, six, 6'5 six, wide receiver, but someone who's gonna be able to play the quicker guys, whether it's in the slot or on the outside. So I like the diversity that they have in their cornerbacks between, you know, Jacoby Johnson, if he does end up playing cornerback and Josiah Wagner. I think that's a really solid duo right there. No doubt. It's a great starting point for this recruiting class in in that. And you know, look, if that's what you wind up with defensively at the corner position feel really good about a couple of blue chip guys that you brought in. This is probably true, John, for any defensive back for the most part, right? You know, a lot of these guys, really pretty much every one of these guys plays both ways, offensively, defensively in high school. And so you're not going to find a lot of corners coming into Oklahoma or safeties coming into Oklahoma that don't feel like, hey, I can go make plays with the football in my hands. But that is especially true in the case of Jacoby Johnson, as we've discussed right here. I mean, this is somebody, John, that has been one of the best wide receivers in the state of Oklahoma. And quite frankly, you go down the list of, you know, potential wide receivers in Oklahoma. It's not really that close between Jacoby Johnson and a lot of other guys. So you you start thinking about the size, obviously, that you've talked about, the ability to match up with a number of different uh, body types, on, on the defensive side of the football, whoever uh, they want to throw at you, maybe even a tight end if you're called upon to, to you know, defend somebody like that. Obviously, big-bodied wide receivers. And then the ability to, hey, if I intercept this pass, John, I can go make something of it. I, I can return this bad boy and feel really comfortable doing it. And then, you know, I think one thing that's important to, to mention on Jacoby Johnson here is just we spend how much time, John, reflecting on or reacting to in-state recruits that don't come to Oklahoma, that don't pick the Sooners. And so when you've got, you know, four-star kid right here, high four-star kid in Jacoby Johnson that is from Mustang and yeah, it's an in-state kid and Oklahoma gets him. I think we got to celebrate that, man. We got to give credit where credit's due to Oklahoma when they fend off in Alabama, when they fend off in Michigan, when they fend off in Arkansas. And even you look at some of these schools here toward the top for Jacoby Johnson, Stanford, look, it's not in the same tax bracket as Alabama and Michigan or Arkansas now today in terms of, you know, winning programs and in football on the gridiron. But Stanford is always going to have a lot of appeal and draw to any particular athlete that maybe is a little more academically inclined because of who Stanford is. So when you can beat out that list of schools and it's an in-state kid like this, John, I just think, again, we spend so much time knocking Oklahoma for in-state kids that get out of state that in this particular instance with Jacoby Johnson, look, we got to give a round of applause to Oklahoma staff. Yeah, this was the one that was theirs to to lose. You know, like it, they would have had to do something wrong for them to lose this one because they had it seemingly in the bag for some time. But yeah, I think you're exactly right. There are so many reasons why kids choose to go out of state. You know, a lot of it is just they want to see something different, you know. They want to get outside of Oklahoma, outside of Norman. And, you know, and that was, from what we understand, that was kind of the case with By Joe. Like, he wanted to see maybe something different. And, and I don't under, I don't fault him for that. Like, I've traveled the world. I've gotten to see a lot of, of what's out there. If I was stuck in one place, you know, grew up all in the same town, and my option was to continue to go there for four more years or go to Florida or go to California or – you know, up north and into Michigan, maybe, I would, maybe I'd take that chance too. Because again, you, you just want to take the opportunities that are giving you to see the world a little bit. And man, I don't fault them for that at all. And I, and I, and I know you're not either. And so I think a lot of times when we think about these recruits that decide to go out of state, there's a lot of extenuating circumstances that leads to that. And it's not just so simple as, well, they're an Oklahoma kid, so they should go to Oklahoma. I mean, and if if all things are equal, then yeah, that that might be the case. But there's a lot of reasons why a kid might choose to go to another school other than Oklahoma or Oklahoma State or Tulsa. So, you know, Oklahoma now has two of the top 10 kids in the state of Oklahoma in Jacoby Johnson and Eric McCarty. 
I think that's pretty solid. Like Oklahoma State only has two of the top 18, and they're not as highly ranked as Oklahoma. So, I mean, Oklahoma's winning the state as far as, you know, in-school or in-state programs. Obviously, you'd like to see them get some of the other higher-ranked guys like a Cole Adams or a Bijou, but it doesn't always fall that way, and that's okay. You just have to take the wins you can get. But now Oklahoma right now sits at number seven in the 24-7 sports composite ranking team rankings. Uh, LSU's had a good few days. They were able to jump ahead of Oklahoma, but only by like 0. .02 points or something like that on the, on the 24-7 uh, team recruiting rankings. Anything else you want to add on, on Jacoby Johnson before we move on here, Josh? Uh, just, uh, again, really, really talented player, top 100 player, according to 24-7 sports. I know we've touched on that, but you just kind of go down the list. And let's see here. I'm going to include Colton Vasek because he's 153 nationally, according to the 24-7 sports composite. So that's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight guys now in the top 150 of the 24 seven sports composite rankings that are committed to Oklahoma. So we can get caught up in just that number seven number nationally. But the important thing for Oklahoma is man, they, they, and they're not done. They're not done either. John, they got a lot of talent in this recruiting class And Jacoby Johnson, just another example of that. Yeah. And they're only five recruiting points within number five, Georgia. So, and, and they're in really good standing with Makari Vickers, really good standing with Anthony Evans and with five-star defensive lineman David Hicks. So there's still several more talented players at this time that we can that they could end up adding. I mean, who knows what else could happen between now and signing day that could even bolster that class even further. We tend to think that all of Oklahoma's kids that are committed right now are going to stay committed to signing day, but you never know what's going to happen. All things always change. But so far, so good. Brent Venables, your staff, you're knocking it out of the park. High five to you. Coming up, we're going to talk about the athletics freak list and the problem we had with it. We'll talk about that after I talk to you about Bet Online. Bet Online is your number one online source for odds, lines, and games. Find reviews and news of every league, including Major League Baseball, NFL, NBA, NHL, combat sports, esports, and even golf. It continues to be the top online resource for all your sports waging information from live in game betting, scores, and podcasts. They've got you covered. So head to bet online today or use your mobile device to learn more about the action happening in sports today. So bet online is where the game starts. And thank you so much for making Locked On soon as your first listen every single day. Make sure you tune in wherever you get your podcasts over on YouTube. Subscribe to the channel over there as well. And hey, if you like Locked On Sooners, maybe check out Locked On Thunder with our guy, the phenomenal Ryland Styles. He's a great host over there. Does a fantastic job covering the Thunder for you over there. Or if you're a Dallas Cowboys fan like myself, check out the Locked On Cowboys podcast with Marcus Mosher and Landon McCool for your second listen here on the Locked On Podcast Network. Josh, the Freaks list. It's always a fun list to go through. Uh, and as it pertains to the Oklahoma Sooners, there's several players on that list that they'll have to match up against this year in the 2022 season. But the problem that we have with it isn't who they'll be facing. It's the fact that no Oklahoma Sooner ended up on this list. How? Good question. I don't, I don't have a good answer <laughs> for that. And, you know, the fact that Anton Harrison was on this list a year ago and now he's been schmitty fied over the course of this offseason. Look, if you were freaky then, you should be extra freaky now, right? You would think, but... I do wonder a little bit with this, and it's Bruce Feldman, right, that puts the, the freaks list together. I, I do wonder if Bruce a little bit just, you know, is kind of like, okay, well, I better share this wealth this season. I had this program and that program on there, and look, I admire anybody and envy anybody or, you know, I, or I don't envy anybody that has to put together a list of 100 different players and think about that many different programs. So from that standpoint, I don't know if OU just – for whatever reason, slipped through the cracks on him this year, or if it was, oh man, I, I you know, I, I didn't really include Michigan or Ole Miss or whoever last year. So let's share the love in 2022. But are you kidding me? Like on the surface, Anton Harrison, again, you had him on there last year. And I know that I think he was 92nd. So it's not as though he was number 23 and all of a sudden, boom, he's gone in the top 100, but that's a little curious. And then beyond that, like, Oklahoma doesn't have one, not one of the top 100 quote-unquote 
freaky guys in college football. I think one of the new arrivals, Jaron Canick alone, I mean, he might be, but just what he's doing as a freshman is probably, to me, merits inclusion. Yeah, I mean, he was a legit track star, like a 100-meter star in the state of Kansas, and you have him at linebacker. So I think there's definitely reason to include him. I, I wonder if some of this kind of falls into the same realm as Bruce Feldman leaving Oklahoma out of his top 25 you know, off-season power rankings. Like, I don't, maybe he just isn't isn't a, isn't sold on Oklahoma, and and he's backed that up several times. You know, because Oklahoma Sooner Nation came after him several times on on Twitter and social media. But maybe that's just some of it. But I think it just adds a little bit more fuel. You know, if they even read any of that stuff and they they see, oh, we're not mentioned here. Okay, uh, you know, we've talked about it a little bit how like no first team All Big Twelve preseason selections. Uh, you know being picked second in several publications or even third in several publications in the big 12. It's, it's a team that isn't getting necessarily as much national respect as you might think, but it is a team that does have quite a few unknowns depend, you know, based on all of the guys that went off to the NFL, you know, we're seeing like a Nick Bonito just have a great week dominating the Dallas Cowboys offensive line, both in practice and uh, on the field in, in the preseason game on Saturday night. Maybe that's some of it is just all of the turnover that's happened. It's left people just kind of not sure really how to peg Oklahoma heading into 2022. And I think that's going to be a good thing. You know, it's, it's okay to like be under underrated to be overlooked a little bit and then get out there and just kind of prove yourselves. Cause last year they were a bit of a front runner and played so many close games. And then when it got to crunch time against, you know, Baylor the first time they weren't able to hang. Uh, you know, they needed a big defensive score against Iowa State to pull away in that one. And then we saw what happened in the second half against Oklahoma State. You know, they got that nine point lead uh, from defense and special teams and the offense couldn't really do anything with it. And so I think it's OK for this team to go into the 2022 season being a little bit overlooked in a sense. Now, they're still the number nine team in you know the USA Today coaches poll. They'll probably be, be pretty highly ranked in the AP poll when it comes out. I'm not saying top five, but maybe, you know, top 15, top 10, but heading into the season where they're going to, they still have a lot to prove, not only to themselves, but to the national media. And as you know, the college football playoff rankings come out mid season, I think we'll have an understanding of what this team is, but I think they're just going to have a lot to prove all year long. Can you use the omission from the freaks list? Can you hang that up as bulletin board material? Does that qualify as bulletin board material in a locker room? I mean, if you're Schmitty, you, I don't know. That, that might be an interesting thing. Like, hey, look how hard y'all have worked this offseason. Next year, how many of you are going to be on this freaks list? Yeah, if I'm Schmitty, that's a good point. I, I like that. If you're Schmitty, it uh, it kind of hits you, hits you right here in, in your heart, right? You're like, I mean, well, what the heck are we doing this for? We don't have one one guy that qualifies for this list. Probably I mean, he doesn't uh, care. Like he probably doesn't have any interest in any of that. But if like, if you're one of the younger strength and conditioning coaches, you might just like put, you know, just kind of put that in the back of their minds. Like, Hey, listen, zero Oklahoma Sooners out of a hundred college football players made the freaks list. What are you going to do to make sure that your name shows up on this list next year? And if I'm the head coach or the head strength coach in Norman, any kind of list like this is getting pinned up. We got one in this training facility. We got one in that training facility. I mean, in any piece of motivational material we can find, we're making use of, baby. Every chip on the shoulder that's out there, we're, we're uh, again, we're, we're using to our advantage. Uh, you know, if there was a list to be left off of, this is probably a good one, right? I mean, like in the pantheon of rankings that ultimately are going to determine the 2022 season, we, I, I think we all know Oklahoma has plenty of talent on this football team and the freaks list doesn't really indicate that, you know, that there's anything to be concerned about more than anything. It's just kind of an odd, just odd occurrence that you wouldn't have at least one Oklahoma player. Right. Cause he digs deep. Like he gets into like FCS schools and, you know, the group of five and all that. And to, to get that deep and then not be able to find one Oklahoma player that's worthy of being on your freaks list. is just, to me like another one i would consider would be eric gray like i think pound for pound he might be one of the strongest players on this team you know again we talked i talked about his legs last week or the week before 
the dude is just he's got tree trunks for legs like 100 year old oak trees for for thighs man the dude is just built and i i don't know what he squats i'd love to find out but i bet it's a lot more than what people might think just given his his height and his, what he looks like in his upper body because the dude is just stacked. So that, that'd be a guy, another one that I would consider on the freaks list. Another one that we're going to talk a little bit more about coming up after the, we, I talked to you about Built Bar is Jalen Redmond. Steve Lasson of Athlon Sports picked him as their or one of their breakout players for 2022. And we'll talk about that after I talk to you about Built Bar. If you haven't tried Built Puffs yet, you are depriving yourself of one of life's greatest joys. And they've done it again. They've got cookie dough chunk puffs. They have a light and chewy texture, real cookie dough chunks, and of course, they're covered in 100% real chocolate. All of the joys of eating cookie dough without the hassle of making it, plus it's healthy for you. Cookie dough chunk puffs only have 160 calories, and they have a whopping 15 grams of protein. I've been talking to you about Built Bar for two years now, and the, the puffs are fantastic. If you love s'mores, if you love you know marshmallow texture things, this is the snack for you. It's like eating dessert, but it's a healthy healthy protein bar for you. Again, low calorie, high protein, low carb. Go to built.com, use promo code locked on 15. That's L O C K E D O N 1 5 and you'll get 15% off your next order using promo code locked on 15. All right, Josh. So, Steve Lasan came out with a list of 50 players that he projects to have breakout seasons in 2022 and he included Jalen Redmond in that and I like the choice. I think Jalen Redmond is one of these guys that's going to benefit greatly. One from the strength and conditioning program that we just mentioned under under you know uh, Jerry Schmidt, and two from Brent Venable's defense that seems to really um, get the most out of interior defensive linemen. And you know, I've kind of posed this to you in the past of could this be problematic? For Jalen Redmond, the fact that all of a sudden those double teams are maybe coming his way, that he's getting a little bit more attention from opposing offensive lines. But I can also then, you know, turn around and say, okay, well, yeah, Nick Benito's gone. Isaiah Thomas is gone. Perion Winfrey, one more time, he's gone, right? It's a Jalen Redmond show, and he gets to be a superstar for Oklahoma. So any of those snap counts that weren't going Jalen Redmond's direction in the past, well, now they're going Jalen Redmond's direction, and he's going to be counted upon. He's going to be thought of to be this star defensive lineman for Oklahoma. So when I think about this list, you said it was how many players that he put together? 50. 50, okay. Which, you know, that's a that's a large number, but 15 it would have been, uh, you know, a, a little more impactful maybe for Jalen Redmond. But, okay, so 50 breakout candidate type players. You and I, we know Jalen Redmond. Oklahoma fans, and probably most Big 12 fans are, if you're a diehard Big 12 football fan, you know the name Jalen Redmond. But nationally, do do Alabama fans really know who Jalen Redmond is? Uh, do Ohio State fans really know who Jalen Redmond is? Or Oregon fans or uh, USC fans probably know the entire Oklahoma roster now, top to bottom. But, you know, you catch my drift here. Nationally, do a lot of folks really know the name Jalen Redmond? I don't know. Probably not. Right. I mean, or at least not to the degree that you or I do or Oklahoma fans or Big 12 fans do. So this from that standpoint, from a breakout potential for Jalen Redmond, number one, I think he's good enough, John, to be that player that we wind up at the end of the season. And he's all Big 12 first team and, uh, you know, up for some of the, the national type of awards and really grabbing national attention. Right. Like surprising some people that really didn't know who Jalen Redmond was before. Yeah, I think you're absolutely onto something there. I think because, you know, he missed some time last year and then obviously sat out in 2020. And so his kind of career has just been a little bit different. It's been a little bit odd. He hasn't had that ability to have a natural progression to his you know, development. Now he's going to have, you know, he played eight games last year, has a full off season, going to go into the 2022 season. Like you said, highly um, expected to be counted on to play a lot of snaps. Only played 309 snaps last season but was productive in those snaps, especially in the last four games of the season. Um, you know, the, the Baylor, Iowa State, Oklahoma State games, and then in the Alamo Bowl, I mean, in those final four games of the year, he had five and a half tackles for loss 
and two sacks. And then he had the big fumble return for a touchdown against Iowa State. So, I mean, even in a part-time role, those last four games of the year, he was impactful. It's just a matter of like staying healthy, staying on the field and continue, continuing to develop your, your game and your, your abilities. And I think we both see like he's got the ability to, to be a very impactful player for the Oklahoma Sooners. Some of it just comes down to opportunity. I mean, you know, in Alex Grinch's defense, for, for better or for worse, you know, they ran a lot of three-man fronts. Well, that didn't allow you a lot of opportunities to run Jalen Redmond on the inside where he's at his best. He was playing a lot of, you know, right defensive end a lot of times or, you know, left defensive end. He's playing kind of more in that three, four defensive end role, which is more of like a run stuffer. Well, you know, in Brent Venable's defense, I think we're going to see a little bit more four-man fronts. And that's going to really benefit him where he can just one gap, just shoot the gap, use his quickness and his strength to get up field and make plays on the ball carrier. Your point about him getting double teams, and I think this is where a guy like Jeffrey Johnson, the addition of him is so huge because, one, he's huge. He's going to just take up space and be a load for offensive linemen to try and deal with, especially in the running game, that they're going to have to, a lot of times, send two guys his way and hope that they can get Jalen Redman with a one-on-one block. That's not going to go well very often, but, I mean, if you just try to you know block Jeffrey Johnson one-on-one, it's not going to go well for you either because the guy is able to get into the backfield himself. He's not the twitchy guy that Jalen Redmond is, not as quick, but he's definitely going to have the strength and the size that's just going to eat up space and, and make life really, really difficult for opposing offensive lines. And then, I mean, we've talked about this trio on the show before, but Reggie Grimes, Ethan Downs, Marcus Stripling, it's not going to be very long before teams are going to have to start accounting for those guys because they're. I think they're going to blow up. Whoever ends up starting, now, you know, I've seen people talk about Ethan Downs has to be a starter. He might start some games. It might be Marcus Stripling starting some games. It might be the, you know, Reggie Grimes. It's going to be some combination of those three guys. And it might not be the same two guys starting every single week. And that's okay. That's going to keep teams off balance because, oh, I have to, I want to prepare for Ethan Downs. Oh, okay. They're starting Marcus Stripling this time at left defensive end. Great. I haven't really looked at as much film on him this week. So, The defensive front may be a bit of an unknown, but the experience that they have in Jeffrey Johnson, the ability they have in Jalen Redmond, and I think the the rising ability of the edge trio that I just talked about is going to make this a really, really fun and very disruptive defensive front. And Jalen Redmond is going to benefit from all of those guys, and all of those guys are going to benefit from him. It's going to be one of those things where it just kind of works in concert together where we're not looking at it like you know isaiah thomas is benefiting from nick nick bonito like i mean last year like i think nick bonito also benefited from isaiah thomas because he was very productive as well and so i'm i'm excited for jalen redmond season the fact that he's going to have you know two consecutive years playing i think it's really going to benefit him and then hopefully again like i said before the the time in jerry schmidt's strength and conditioning program is going to help alleviate some of those you know, small minor injuries that he's kind of suffered at different times in his career. So I'm excited for Jalen Redmond's season. Is there anybody else on Oklahoma's, you know, offense or defense that you might think is going to experience a breakout season in 2022? I think Jaleel Farouk offensively to me is a slam dunk, no brainer. I think that he absolutely is trending in that direction. I think he's going to wind up as, you know, one of Oklahoma's certainly top four wide receivers. And I think there's a really good chance that, He's top three, maybe even one of the top two wide receivers. I'm probably still leaning Marvin Mims, Theo Weiss there, but I definitely think that Jaleel Farouk is that next guy in line after uh, each of those two. So he would be a name offensively that would come to mind. And then uh, defensively, I don't know. I, I got to see more from the defensive backfield. I, you know, just kind of defaulting back to Key Lawrence, just being a little bit even more of a star. I'm very excited to see what his season looks like. I I don't know if it's too soon yet for Jaron Canick, but just based on some of the stuff we've heard, I think there's a chance. Now, linebacker's not typically the position where we see guys get right onto the field straight away, and, well, at least not usually for the right reasons, right? Like, even thinking back to – K-9 at Oklahoma, I don't know that that was exactly what Oklahoma wanted to have to draw up that way. Now, it worked out, right, before it was all said and done with K-9. But uh, generally speaking, probably don't want to play a linebacker right there. But I love what you said about the other guys up front for Jalen Redmond. I think 
all of that, you know, ties in together. And really, if we're talking about Jalen Redmond having had the breakout season that obviously he's forecasted to right here, then that probably means Jeffrey Johnson was as good as advertised. And it means that two out of those three guys that you talked about, Reggie Grimes, Ethan Downs, and Marcus Stripling, that probably at least two of those three guys were pretty darn good. Yeah, and I honestly think all three of those guys could have what we'd call a breakout season this year. Um, I think there's going to be enough snaps for the three of them uh, because I, I I tend to think that on you know definitive passing downs, either Reggie Grimes or Marcus Stripling will bump inside and play alongside Jalen Redmond. So you'll have kind of what they call a NASCAR package with three defensive ends in there to, to just add speed and, and quickness to the defensive front. So, man, it's going to be fun. I can't not wait to see what Brent Venable's defense looks like against UTEP. I especially can't wait to see what it's going to look like against Nebraska. That's going to be a lot of fun. Uh, Josh, man, great catching up as always. Great talking about the Oklahoma Sooners. That's going to do it for today's episode. Make sure you subscribe to the show wherever you get your podcasts. We're free and available on all platforms. Hit up YouTube. Hit the subscribe button over there. Hit the like button as well. And drop a – hit the notification bell. Thank you. Do that. Not hit – Not yeah, anyway. Terrible closing this time. But you guys know the drill. Like, yeah. subscribe. Do all that yeah. fun stuff. Do all that fun stuff. And we'll catch you next time. Until then, he's Josh Helmer. I'm John Williams. Boomer Sooner.